Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. Have you made an MCP server? Maybe you use the MCP SDK, but did you know that you can deploy your MCP server as an Azure function with just one line of code change? Lily Ma is here to show me how it works today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott and it's Azure Friday. We're here with Lily. How are you? Hey Scott, I'm doing well. How are you? I am very well. You know, I am up to my ears in learning about AI and learning about MCP servers. I've run a couple of local MCP servers, but then I heard about remote MCP for Azure Functions and I knew I had to talk to you. Yep. Um, so that's what we're going to kind of talk to you about today. So um, earlier in the year, uh, Azure Functions uh, released a MCP functions extension. And that is for you know people who know about the functions programming model. They know about our triggers and bindings. They want to build their servers and host on functions. But like you said, what if you've already built your server using the MCP SDKs, and now you just want to bring them over to Azure Functions and host them? Well, that's mm -hmm. what we're have. What, I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so we call these servers self-hosted because you just literally bring them over uh, and host on functions without any code changes, actually. We've been making a lot of improvements. Um, so these servers are hosted as custom handlers uh, on Azure Functions. So the custom handlers, you can think of them a little bit like light we uh, lightweight web apps that kind of shuffles requests from the functions host. and that's how you're able to kind of host your uh, server that's built with, uh, you know, these official MCP SDKs on functions. And the benefit of hosting on functions are they're multiple. Uh, my favorite is the built-in um, authentication flow, uh, leveraging our feature called EasyAuth that basically implements uh, a lot of the requirements by the MCP auth spec. So I'll kind of show that in the demo later. Uh, and then the other thing is our flex, uh, flex consumption plan. So it allows you to uh, really scale out your server um, when you, you know, to handle all the bursty load that you may have and then scale back down when it's not needed anymore. And the best thing is you just pay for what you use. So these are kind of some of the benefits uh, for hosting on functions. Uh, there are others more, um, but I can't wait to kind of get into the demo and show you yeah. how it works. Let's do it. I love it that it's all on Azure Functions because it's serverless, which means that I think about servers less. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. All right, let's see the demo. Yep. Uh, so let me switch over to VS Code. So here I have uh, basically the Python weather server. This is kind of like the hello world for MCP servers. I mm -hmm. just took this from um, the MCP uh, repo. Uh, didn't do any changes to it. Um, you know, you have two tools. One is get alerts. The other one is get forecast. And you, you know, you pass it. Uh, a location and then returns um, the weather or the for or any weather alerts. So um, one thing I wanted to point out is um, because we're in early access preview right now, um, we support only servers that use the streamable HTTP transport and servers that are stateless. So just one thing wanted to kind of call to your attention. But yeah, so now I have this server. What do I need to do to host on functions? Um, so there's only one thing that you need to add, and that's the host.json. So this really just tells the functions host that, OK, I, um, I'm going to have a custom handler. And it's kind of of type MCP. Um, so this, uh, this configuration profile basically sets a bunch of defaults for you on the functions host side, so then the server can run uh, properly. And then you just give it the port um, that the host should be listening listening to. And here, because I kind of want to show like the easy auth feature that we have, I've deactivated the, um, you know, accessing the server with functions access key, uh, because I want to kind of show the, the built-in authentication flow that you, you can have in front of the server using easy auth. So yeah, so that's all you need if you want to uh, deploy your server uh, onto functions. One um, question. I know yep. that an MCP server can expose n number of tools. Is it just taking any public function and that becomes a tool? Or where is my enumeration of tools occur? So that is actually, the tools would actually be on the server side. Here, the functions is just um, 
passing in all of their requests from the um, from the client into like the host, the function's host. And then the host would kind of run this app and this app is what returns. Oh, I see. Um, and then line 40 right there, you've got MCP tool. Yeah. So get alerts has marked up with an attribute that describes that get alerts is a tool, but those yeah. other public functions are not. So here it looks like get alerts and get forecast are the tools that are enumerated. Exactly. So Very the cool. server actually uh, enumerates the tools for you. I'll kind okay. of show that uh, later in the demo. All right, um, let's do it. Yeah, so that's all you need. Uh, also, if you want to, you know, test the server locally, you would need to include the local settings.json. Um, so functions provides a CLI called core tools, which basically is kind of like functions, but running locally on your computer mm. as if it's running on the cloud. Um, so if you want to test your server locally first, you know, you can also do that with Azure Functions. Um, you would need this local settings file. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to uh, show you how this gets deployed. So as with a lot of the new samples that we have, we always include this infra folder, which has all of the biceps that are needed to first create the resources that you need, and then second, deploy uh, the server. So that means I can just run AZD up, and this will kind of create all of the resources that I need. I'll pick my... Uh, subscription and then. So did you make the bicep, or it? could I have set AZD up just with the host.json file there? I made the bicep, okay, so you, you made would the need bicep. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the bicep does take a little bit to run. Uh, I'm not going to wait for it to finish. Uh, I'm just going to show you uh, like a finished deployment. Mm -hmm. So, oops, here uh, is uh, a resource group that I deployed earlier with. Uh, the AZD up command. And mm -hmm. as you can see, I have all of the resources, this being my function app, also my MCP server. So um, notice I have the HTTP handler here. Like this was created thanks to the configuration profile that I showed you earlier in the host.json. And so right now, let's just test this remote server. So I'm going to copy this um, domain and head over VS Code. And this one's still anonymous, as you pointed out at the beginning. Yep. Um, but it's going to do a pretty awesome auth flow. Okay. You'll so you see. just said slash MCP. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm going to add the server to the local workspace. And let's see what happens. Right. Oh. Here, VS Code is asking me to authenticate. So I'm going to do that. Give it my email. And... Kind of let's see what happens. Um, actually, okay, so there's me... the remote. I see MCP remote. You're showing us the debug output for that. Yep. Yeah, actually, let me show you kind of like just a cleaner Discovered. version of no, this. Oh, that's great though. There's the two tools I mentioned. That's fantastic. Yep. And um, I want to show you kind of what happened underneath the hood a little bit because it's it's where all the magic happens, I think. So first, the client, in this case, VS Code, is trying to connect to the server. But look at what it ha what happened the first time. It returned oh. a 404, uh, 401. 401, as, unauthorized. Yep. But in the header of the um, response, it also gave it this path. This is the path to the PRM, or the protected resource metadata, um, which contains the information about the authorization server. In this case, it's ONTRA. And that's why um, I got the prompt to... Uh, authenticate. Um, and after I authenticate it, um, the, the client does a bunch of calls to Entra to try to get an auth token. So I think it does like, it tries it a few times until um, it gets that token from Entra. And what happens, is, what happens is it sticks that token into a new request um, to the client, uh, to the MCP server. So now, um, so it made another request, and now this request passed through, and we got 200. And that's how um, I got authenticated, uh, the client, in this case, VS Code. And then there's a bunch of kind of talks between VS Code and the server. And then in the end, um, the server kind of goes like, I have two tools that you can use. Um, and they're named get, alert get Alerts. 
and then the other one get forecast. So like all of that uh, are basically the requirements uh, of the MCP alt spec, like the, the PRM, um, you know, first sending back a 401, et cetera. And I didn't have to implement that myself. I just enabled the easy auth feature on my function app and I got all of that out of the box. That's clean. Um, yeah. That's really clean. Because you took that MCP server, which was working fine locally, you moved it up into the cloud with just a host.json. Because it had attributes like MCP tool, those those still work. They're just remote, not local. VS Code is smart about the MCP auth flow, handled it, did it in a very elegant way and allowed, prompted you to log in. And yep. the server wrapped your MCP server, the serverless server, the, uh, the host, the functions host, handled all that easy auth for you. You didn't really have to do anything different. Yeah, like the server code remains the same. Uh, just write your server, write your tools, and functions uh, with easy auth kind of handles all of the, the authentication part. That's so cool. And as you said, you're using flex consumption. So like yep. you won't pay at night when everyone's asleep and the thing is off, and then 100 people show up in the morning, and then it turns on. Yep, and it's very fast scale. So those 100 people won't even feel that you know there's a lot of traffic this is really cool i'm trying to think about like i've got all these little stupid mcp servers that are kind of running around in docker locally there's no reason i shouldn't move these up into the cloud you did point out though that this requires statelessness for now yeah. is is a, are these tools simply getting called or is there any context that's being passed in from the larger conversation that the mcp server might be having as a part of the uh the interaction with the AI? As of now, it's only being called. Mm -hmm. um, I think you would all have to uh, kind of implement the statefulness yourself as well. In addition to us supporting that statefulness, you would have to implement that into your tools Gotcha. Um, to kind of get the, the stateful and the, the contextual. Yeah. I'm totally kind of Sorry. brainstorming and also product managing on my own, but I'm kind of imagining like dur durable functions are a thing. If this thing becomes popular, you could have durable remote MCP servers if you wanted. Yeah. Um, I work on durable functions too. So, so you're thinking about this stuff. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> there you go. Um, run, run. <laughs> yep. So let's, I think one thing we haven't tried is actually try oh, it. Oh, we got to do it. We got to call um, the so, thing. Yeah. So, uh, oh, so I just opened up uh, VS Code Copilot in agent mode. So I'm going to ask yeah. it the weather in New York because I'm in New York. And how is it going to know? It's going to know because it enumerates all the tools and you're the only one that has expressed an interest in the weather. Yeah. So um, Copilot now has access. So if I look here, uh, these are all the tools that Copilot has access to. Yep. Uh, one being the the MCP server. Yep, the remote one that we just deployed. And then it has these two tools that um, are available. So that's, that's how, yep. So it's like, oh, I, I have this question from you and I can use this tool to answer it. So I'm going to allow it and oh, let's see what it returns. All right. Uh, so it's that. like, it's going to be pre pretty chilly, but sunny. So, well, that's good, good news to me. Um, yeah, cool. so that's kind of the, the demo. Um, so one more thing I would mention is uh, right now, I kind of demoed uh, connecting to the server uh, using VS Code. But in reality, maybe you would want to do that with your agents, right? That's probably more realistic. Um, so another thing that we do support is um, agents that are built on Foundry can connect mm -hmm. to the MCP servers hosted on functions and leverage the tools. So that way, like you can empower your, your agents. This is really cool. I, if I seem a little bit quiet, I'm, I'm like the, the, the wheels are turning about how I'm going to use this in my own uh, experience and, and how quickly I'll be able to get my existing MCP servers into the cloud and then plugged into larger flows. This is nice. Yeah. Um, it, we've kind of done a lot to to simplify the requirements down to just this host.json. We even got rid of the one line of code change that you mentioned at the beginning. So yeah, I guess the only line of code is really just the existence of a host.json. So you're right, there isn't really any code at all. Yeah, um, exactly. So uh, try one it out. Quick, 
One yep. quick question, actually, if you don't mind, go back to the, the the default authorization level. You've got default anonymous. What is the explain to me how we got the Entra ID prompt, but this on line ten says anonymous. So this anonymous, this is actually functions built in authentication. Oh. Um, there are kind of two mo modes. One is anonymous, meaning anyone can access it. The other one is functions access key. If I were to do that, then in the in this uh, mcp.json, when I try to connect to the server, I would also have to pass in as part of the header the functions Got access it. key. All right, I got it now. So right that. now, your function is anonymous, and I could call it. I could go around the MCP and call it directly as an Azure function, but we've got a wrapper around it, which is the remote MCP server? You cannot, because I've made the function to authenticate only kind of via the easy auth flow. Oh. So you can't access this function either. That's clever. And I assume the documentation has best practices on this because like you said, there's function authorization. Just like when you put an Azure front door in front of an Azure website, you're going to be having anonymous traffic between the front door and the website, but the outside public traffic will be authorized. In this case here, I'm speaking in an authenticated way to the MCP server, kind of like front door in quotes. And then it's calling the, the, the MCP server is proxying that traffic to the function, right? Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. So you were going to show yeah. us some documentation, I think. Yeah, I think just very quickly, um, we do have some samples uh, that are out. So the uh, like I mentioned, right now we're in early access preview, but we're working really hard to get it to public preview next month. Um, so check out the blog post. You can also scan this QR code. Um, for We also have samples and all of them, like I said, have kind of the info folder. So with all of the biceps, so you can just easy, uh, AZD up and kind of get uh, a server running very quickly um, and start testing it out. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Lily Ma, for sharing that with us today. Yep. Thank you. I am learning all about remote MCP for Azure Functions today on Azure Friday. Mm -hmm.